Hello, and welcome to the Pro Whitesmith PVM Guide, created by the Gaylord himself, Zoma. This video entails everything you'll need to know about Whitesmiths, except PvP and WoW strategies. I hope you enjoy, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them in the topic, or PM me if you want. Now, first things first, if you aren't going to use battle mode, you may as well close this video now, because you aren't going to succeed my way unless you use it. F12 switching is not an acceptable substitute. I'll be explaining stats and how you should divvy them up, and no, to save you all time, you cannot have any exact numbers or my stats. Let's start with strength, the most important stat a whitesmith has. Whitesmiths are the best DPS class in RO, hands down, rivaled only by creators, so it's crucial to have a high amount of strength. Shooting for the 120 strength bonus with no buffs except loud exclamations should be your goal for this stat, though with the new armors and a few stat adding cards, 130 strength will not be impossible to reach naturally sometime in the future. Agility, the second stat, goes hand in hand with strength in terms of DPS, however, agility does not need to be too high in order to get a decent amount of DPS. Cart termination speed caps out at 186 ASPD, that's why a large amount of agility is not necessary. Horn of the Buffalo said it's nice to increase your ASPD, but it's not necessary to be good. Dexterity is also important, though not as important as the latter. 30 to 50 base dex should do it. Now, vitality, that's completely different and unrelated to the previous stats. This not only determines your max HP, but more importantly, determines your natural resistance to status effects. Of course, if you didn't already know this, then you need to brush up on RO a bit more before going into the advanced things I'll be explaining in this video. I find that anyone with less than 70 vit total stuns too often to be useful. The hardest part of making your stat build is probably going to be balancing your vitality and agility. Luckily, we have the reset NPC, so you can find your perfect balance. Everyone prefers a different feel, so giving out an exact number would do nothing but bastardize my own build. I won't be covering skills in this video, since skill builds should be self-explanatory. However, I will say this. If you're going to be a 9970 battlesmith, then please, 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 please don't get identifier vending at all. Magnifiers cost flex next to nothing, and you can make another character to vend anyway. Now, on to leveling. Leveling a blacksmith can either be the most boring experience or the most exhilarating experience, depending on what you choose to do in terms of builds. Memonite build as a blacksmith is not as expensive as you may think it is, especially if you happen to have an ice pick. However, even if you don't, leveling with Mammonite is not always more expensive. From recent personal experience on another server, I leveled my blacksmith in a Mammo build while using mostly white pots to support myself since I didn't have a priest to help me level, and I still managed to rake in 56 mil in pure zenny within a month of playing. Since I don't support or condone an agility-based smith ever, or merchant class in general, I won't be covering it in this video. Merchants have terrible flea, and getting agility simply for ASPD is stupid when you can just get more DPS and survivability by putting more into strength and vit instead of agility. As far as leveling goes, you can start off in culvert with novice potions as a merchant, killing stuff till you work your way up to about level 35, in which you can transition over to Toy Factory. I personally grinded to job 50 as a merchant at Toy Factory, however, if this isn't your thing, you're always welcome to multi-client a mage and leech yourself on geos or soils. Geographers would be the prime choice to level a mage on any other server. However, for some reason, a geographer has the ability to heal itself, thus making it near impossible for lower levels to kill them. Now, as a blacksmith, leveling is very easy, and can be done just about anywhere with the right weapons. If you have a nice pick, you can mammo as early as level 60 efficiently. One map north and two S of Aldebaran is a great map to level if you have a nice pick with a fire and down. However, if you're not blessed with a nice pick, your second best option would be invest in some elemental two-handed axes to level at places like Otters, Hillwinds, Bibelin Island, just about anywhere with monsters with the same element. Either way, leveling a blacksmith is, the mo is mostly a grind fest, but it gets more fun and interesting as a whitesmith. As a whitesmith, leveling is a bit more difficult in the lower levels, but it's much more rewarding once you get to a higher level. Generally, you'll want to stay at the same place as I mentioned as a blacksmith, up until about level 85 to 90. By then you should have cart termination maxed, as well as a decent supply of zenny to support your CT craze. Now you can one-shot sleepers with an ice pick instead of spending 2k to kill them in two mammonites, therefore pulling more money your way. You can also use CT to level with your fire two-hand axe as I did at Stings. You'll have to test your luck with finding gloves versus how much you spend, but overall, I think it's worth the risk. A great way to make money after you've maxed your smith is at Gathinia. You'll need an ice pick, but other than that, everything else doesn't really matter too much. Teleport around with full buffs from a high priest, including a Spercio, and you can one-shot Incubus and Succubus, who drop gold rings, silver rings, and diamond rings that you can sell at the NPC, as well as a chance of getting an Incubus or Succubus card or horns, which you can sell for upwards of 10 mil. You can also kill Abysmal Knights, but it may take you two or three hits to down those. Another good way of making money is forging. The only build for that is 99 dex and 99 luck, since those are the only two stats that affect it. 
get gears that boost those respective stats and forge weapons and vend them. You're almost guaranteed to make profit, so long as you have money to support yourself with in the beginning. MVPing is also a very good option with Lightsmith. With a good High Priest, there's loads of options you can choose from in terms of MVPing, such as Doppelganger, General Yigmism, or how do you pronounce that goddamn name, Turtle General, Pharaoh, Incantation Samurai, Orc Hero, or just about anything. Whitesmiths can outdamage champions and spend less than a creator would, which is why Whitesmith is generally acceptable for more competitive MVPs. Before you run off to MVP things on your smith, there are a few things you need to know first. First of all, unlike champion, you'll want to bring white potions since you're not only the main DPS, but you're also the tank. You can't have an HP tank, Ephus, and teleport like a champ, so you'll have to be geared to take damage and use a few whites here and there. If you don't have an ice pick, then your selection for MVPing will be extremely limited. Generally speaking, it's the best weapon you'll have for MVPing, and owning one puts you way above any smith that doesn't have one. However, this does not mean ice pick is always superior. Some MVPs, such as Moonlight Flower, have low defense and bit. You can pull off using an axe with adrenaline rush, such as a war axe or an orcish axe, but don't use a two-handed weapon. That Mammonite hurts. Watch out for Dispel. Orc Lord and Orc Hero are two convenient MVPs to fight as well. Ice Pick works pretty well against them, but ever since their bit has been nerfed, Combat Knife has become the better weapon to CT them with. They're demi-human, so if you have a cranial shield for PvP, then you have a shield to MVP them with. Orc Lord's Earthquake update has made him very difficult to kill, but it's still possible on Smith. I'd suggest using Champion for him, however. There are also some MVPs such as Turtle General, Lord of Death, and Incantation Samurai who have the MVP Agility Up skill, which makes them next to impossible to hit. You can either wait this out by teleporting and waiting for it to wear off, or you can bring Professor who can dispel it. Use Ice Pick and Endow against Lord of Death and Turtle General. Axe with Adrenaline Rush against the Samurai is better. MVPs that heal are a real pain in the ass, so you'll want to take them out in one run so they don't heal all the way to full HP if you die. Maya is a perfect example of this. If she kills you, she'll likely teleport and heal herself up, putting the bulk of your effort to waste. If the MVP is located lower than three floors down, like Moonlight Flower or Pharaoh, you'll want to go without a Link. Luckily, Moonlight has low Vit and defense, so you won't need Ice Pick or Link, and Pharaoh has loads of Vit, so you'll make up for ASPD and damage. As for the higher end MVPs, most are too difficult for Smiths to do efficiently, such as Valkyrie Randris, Ifrit, or Katol Nux. However, other MVPs such as the Bio 3 MVP or Fields Above are very efficient with a party. Ledging the Bio 3 MVP makes killing it much easier, but it is also possible to kill it off the ledge. Now, I'll list a few facts about Whitesmiths and dispel a few rumors. Number 1. Whitesmiths are the best DPS class in the game. True. Though Ephist and Sonic Blow are both devastating burst damage, card termination is non-stop, constant damage, and will not stop. The stun happens much more often than Sonic Blow stun and why this skill is superior to AD in my opinion. Number 2. Whitesmiths are too expensive. False. Though spinning raw zenny is a bit intimidating to some, the simple fact that most classes need catalysts to function such as poison bottles or gems and cobwebs makes whitesmiths all the more attractive. Sure, those items can't compare in cost how much you'll be spending, but since you use a medium in exchange to, f in to fight instead of using a specific item, you'll find that whitesmiths are much more low maintenance than they seem. Number 3. Whitesmiths don't need to use battle mode. False. And a huge slap in the face. Your buffs alone should take up one whole row. If you want to add skills and items, there's another row. I also use more than one row for my gears, so anyone who thinks you don't need to use battle mode for a smith is sadly mistaken. I can't think of much else to say about how I play whitesmith. If you have any questions, please feel free to PM me in-game or over the forums and I'll be more than glad to help you. Until then, this is Zelma, signing out.
いつぜグルービー